Well, you guys wanted an update on Reedy Creek. We get to do an I told you so. Here we go. Well, welcome back. Another great day here at Valiant Renegade. It's great to see everybody out there once again. And if you are like one of the many folks watching out there, not yet subscribed to the channel, please take a moment, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, share this sucker out on the social medias. And of course, please do leave a comment below the video before you head out the door today. Joined once again by two very good friends here to talk about the Reedy Creek, the Disney, the Ron DeSantis, all the fun stuff at Disney that has been driving them bonkers for the last eight months welcome back wdw pro from thatparkplace.com and of course andrew esquire from the legal mindset gentlemen welcome back glad Thank to be sir. here glad to be here got to talk about something that is in my wheelhouse and give us a big i told you so which is what i always love to do Valiant. oh yeah a big big i told you so we talked about this for those of you who are new to the channel and man there have been a lot i think when uh andrew you and i did our first video together uh, on this topic might have been late March, maybe early April. I've got to go back and look. It was right in that in that field. I think at the time I had around maybe five or six thousand subscribers and we're up to almost 16,000 now. So there's going to be a lot of folks that probably did not see that. We'll leave a link to those original videos from from about eight months ago now uh, when we all uh, you know gave initial predictions and Andrew talked about the variances and in the state laws, of course, Andrew, his area of legal expertise was setting up special taxing districts in the state of Florida. So <laughs> could not have a more knowledgeable person on this subject. So, Andrew, why don't you give the audience kind of a little recap when all of this started and talk about, you know, some of the the, the myths that were flying around on this, what was going to happen sure. versus what Disney had in 1967, which is apparently now that's not coming back from what we can see. No, no. So in 1967, Florida was still kind of the Wild West. We're still in an era of Florida where Florida was being developed. The population of Florida was growing exponentially. There were still politicians that were likely to give large leeway to developers, to new communities that are coming into Florida to get people to come to Florida and to keep coming to Florida. And one of the huge incentives was when the Walt Disney Company finally came out revealed their secret plan that they'd been setting up all these shell companies to buy up huge swaths of central Florida. When they said, we were putting these together under one company, we're merging these and we want to do a thing. We want to build this experimental prototype community of tomorrow. You might even call it Epcot. Uh, and we want this to be a city. We want this to have people living there. We want them to work there. We want them to be you know, right there in this place because we have all this land enough to build an entire city in. Uh, mm -hmm. more than the size of San Francisco, the total size of San Francisco we have over here in Central Florida, we want to use this land and build a city. And they said, you know what? We're going to give you all the powers of a city, the ability to self-regulate. In fact, you're going to be immune from county government, which is something that no other city is immune from in Florida. Just you guys. We're just going to give it to you guys because, heck, we think you're fine folks and you're going to bring lots of business, your swell business to here to Central Florida. So they, oh, they obviously... Oh, shucks. <laughs> <laughs> so the mouse, or as we sometimes lovingly call them in Central Florida law, the rat, <laughs> Seems to have greased a couple palms back then, shook a, shook a couple hands in Tallahassee. And back in that day, they were friends with Democrats and Republicans. It really didn't matter if they were, you know, an elephant or, a, you know, a, a donkey. They were they were paying everybody. They were giving mm -hmm. everybody money back in the day. They were greasing everybody's palm. Well, fast forward to 2022 and the or 2022, 2023 and the parental rights and education bill. Uh, this is uh, the bill that came out, which had a conservative name and had a liberal name. I'm not going to say either one of those names because both of those, you know, are uh, have been labeled as problematic. So we'll just say the parental rights and education, which is, by the way, the neutral name, because that's the actual name of the bill. I was going to say and, actually the name of 1557. Yes. Yes. So that bill related to the education of children and whether children should be addressing sexual topics between the grades of kindergarten and third grade. Uh, that bill said that's inappropriate for children. Leave that out of the curriculum of the class. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. And a lot of people had problems with that, including the Walt Disney Company, which felt it was appropriate to teach children about sexual education, including gender identity and all that sort of stuff. And during the grades of kindergarten to third grade, they thought that's something they needed to speak out strongly on. And they issued many strong statements in support of that and their employees that were of LGBTQ plus persuasion because they felt that, once again, keyword felt that was infringing on their rights. Well, that is a hard political stance and in fact was misaligned with not just the reality, but also the common accepted views of most Floridians. Most Floridians did not opposed that. In fact, they supported this measure. Mm -hmm. So Ron DeSantis said, well, wait a second. And the Florida letter said, wait a second. Why are we giving preferential tax treatment to a single company? Why in 2022, when Universal, Legoland, SeaWorld, they don't have their own special districts. They have to play by all the rules of the state and the county government. Why are we continuing in 2022 to give them exceptions, exceptions like the ability to build their own nuclear power plant, like the ability to build their own airport. If they wanted to, uh, you know, have rides out from, you know, the Disney built airport to Epstein's Island, they could do that with no reg no state or local regulation. And by the way, they have their own law enforcement. So they kind of set the rules in these uh, cities and towns mm -hmm. that are within the perimeters of Disney World in Orlando. So they said, you know what? This special district called the Reedy Creek Improvement District and the sub the sub the sub entities of Buena Vista, um, the town of Buena Vista within there, mm -hmm. um, and Bay Lake, the town of mm -hmm. Bay Lake, that are pseudo sub cities. districts, pseudo mm -hmm. cities within uh, within the Reedy Creek Improvement District. They said we're doing away with those within the act of the Florida Legislature, which would disband and wind down the Reedy Creek Improvement District, within that very legislation, which would wind it down in July of 2023, yep. they said that they had the full power to reform the district under the current laws of the state of Florida. So nothing prohibited them from reforming this district under the current laws of the state of Florida, chapters 189 or 190 of the Florida statutes, which is how Every other developer and company within the state of Florida has to operate. They all play within these rules. Right. So immediately the Democratic politicians, the liberal media and Disney said, oh, my God, the Reedy Creek Improvement District, Bay Lake, all these people, they have these bonds out there. They have mm -hmm. millions and millions of dollars in bonds, and those are all going to go on the taxpayers of Central Florida. And at first they started by saying Central Florida that wasn't getting enough effect. So then mm -hmm. they started to say it's going to go on the state of Florida. They, mm -hmm. they, they had two different scare tactics. But regardless, they said these bonds that are now only payable by Disney are going to go to the whole state. We're all going to have to pay them or Orange County, Osceola County is going to have to pay them. It's crazy. Oh, my God. These are only for roads within, within uh, Disney. Well, the ironic thing about it is, number one, those are supposed to be public roads because it's supposed to be public infrastructure. So it's really not supposed to benefit one company. But right. that aside, but putting that to the side. Because Reedy uh, Creek is supposed to be a completely supposed. separate and autonomous legal entity apart from Disney. Yes. And it's not supposed part to be, of Disney. It's supposed to be completely neutral. Yep. Both politically, which, by the way, is a requirement of Florida government that they be politically neutral. Uh, and also separate from total control by a company. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be controlled by the people, things of the people. If well, only there were people there. If only there were people there. But but WDW Pro, there are people there. Who are they? And, well, there's there's a couple trailers on yes. the property. And, and those people, well, they're real people. They're just also really working for the Walt Disney Company. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> or immediate family members, friends. All they're, placed they're, there by the Walt Disney Company in those double wides on those two lovely cul-de-sacs, one in Bay Lake and one in Lake Buena Vista. Again, we'll leave the link to the video where we actually did, Pro and I, a Google Earth flyover of those lovely uh, little trailer parks that they have in there that make up that multi-billion dollar city. How dare the most you, sir? Those are pseudo cities. Those are not trailer parks. <laughs> those are the most magical cities on earth. The most yes. magical cities on earth. How dare you not snort enough pixie dust to believe that? <laughs> um. <laughs> so we're, we're at this point now. Yeah. And, 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 you know, we talked about the thing with the bonds. You said it. I agree with you because I, I like we were talking about this before we started recording. 
I know a lot about bonds and, and the laws yes. around the bonds. You, you can't extend the area of, 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 of taxation to satisfy the payments on those bonds. That's not how those work. And that's not yeah. how Florida law works, specifically around these types of bonds. Mm -hmm. They say they are only applicable to the people in which they're levied. They mm -hmm. were levied on Disney property. They were not levied on the county at large. They were not levied on the state. So therefore, under yep. Florida law, they cannot be applied to the entire state or the entire county. If they tried to do that, if they attempted to do that, a judge would invalidate those bonds. And the bondholders who paid millions of dollars, right? These are people mm -hmm. who are very rich, very wealthy, institutional investors who yep. pay to buy these bonds because they're very secure, very safe, good investments, um, typically. <laughs> that is not financial <laughs> advice, uh, but <laughs> they are they are typically good investments that, that people tend to invest in. They feel they're safe. They, they believe they're safe, whether they are or not. Um, so they invest in these bonds and they want to return. And they're not about to do something that's going to jeopardize their return. And expanding those bonds to all of the county would definitely jeopardize their ability to collect on those bonds, uh, and they might be invalidated. So uh, I said, look, here's what's going to happen. They're going to form a new district and or you know, a district that's called Reedy Creek Improvement District. It's going to be, have the exact same name. It's just going to follow the laws of 189. Yep. It's going to not have powers like building an airport or a nuclear power plant. It'll have powers like roads, like fire, probably fire prevention. It'll probably even have private security, your ability to, to pay for private security, the ability to do mosquito control, things that other places in Florida and other special districts do. They do that on a regular basis. Right by in celebration, they do a lot of those things. They have the ability to set up their own police if they want. They choose to contract with Osceola County, but they could set up their own police department or fire department if they so chose. They choose not to because it's cheaper to contract with the neighboring county, the neighboring cities to provide those services. Mm -hmm. Well, Walt Disney will be sitting in the same shoes. They'll have the ability to either keep their private services, which they likely will do because they already have those set up, or to contract with Osceola or Orange County to provide those services. It really won't change the day-to-day -day operations of Disney or Reedy Creek, and it certainly won't impact taxpayers that never planned or anticipated paying for infrastructure within the confines of Walt Disney World. However, the news had an interesting angle on this. What was the what was the take valiant that the news had on this, particularly when a certain someone took over at Disney? Oh yeah, uh, I believe that was recently when Mr. Iger came back. There was all of this celebration that well, now that was it. You know, Florida was going to say, "Great, you got rid of you got rid of Chapek. We'll give you we'll give you that 1967 deal back." No, no. No, not no, no, not happening. Nope. You mean Iger doesn't have leverage with Republicans in Florida? I am shocked, gentlemen. <laughs> I don't. I don't think Bob Iger has much leverage with Republicans at the local dog pound. Um, no. Um, I look, mean, he was he was confirmed. I mean, he was really planning to run on the Democratic ticket, was he not? I mean, at one point. Well, he he never officially ran for president. That was the. I mean, that's that's why Disney was was grabbed by the throat and dragged hard left was 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 Robert Iger at the time who was in that executive position for almost 15 years that was he wanted to take Disney very much hard left to position himself for a a nomination to the Democrat National Party's ticket it just just didn't happen um but that that's where he was going but but to this end and and to what Andrew was just saying you know the key point is is that again is that Nobody or no properties outside of that Reedy Creek Improvement District can be held liable for those bonds. And the only the only people that own property inside of that area, whether it exists as a special taxing district or not, is the Walt Disney Company. So ultimately, the Walt Disney Company is who is going to be uh, liable for satisfying those bonds. And we could see here, this is an article from a local Florida publication during an August interview on the Bond Buyer podcast, the state bonds finance director, Ben Watkins, noted that lawmakers always intended to come back later to spell out how the dissolution of Reedy Creek would work. Watkins told the podcast that the state would create a new entity under 189 and 190 to assume Disney's debts while also placing state appointees, state appointees, meaning appointees to oversee the board of Reedy Creek Improvement District that are going to be put in there by Governor Ron DeSantis in this case and a heavily Republican-controlled Florida state legislature. 
Uh, Florida taxpayers, he said, would be off the hook while Disney would pay the bill regarding the bonds. So there you go. Now, this was that was a statement he made a couple of months ago, but you and I talked about this four or five months before that. So there, there we have it. And, and again, to go back to this New York uh, Post uh, piece, no, the reality is, is Ron DeSantis is not turning back. And, and we talked about this a couple of months ago, and then, Pro, I want to get your thoughts. You know, we said there's going to be a lot of people jumping up and down. Disney is going to say, ha, ah, we won, we won, we got our special taxing district back. But again, you have to understand it's not the same taxing district they're not going to have the 1967 god mode powers that they had they're they're as andrew said they are going to have to play under the same rules of section 189 and 190 of florida state statutes um which means that they are going to have to pay taxes and fees and 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 succumb to the regulatory authorities of the counties in which the walt disney world resort resides and that is Orange County and uh, so what's the other one? Osceola, Osceola County. Yeah. So I mean that that's there. You know, right now. Osceola. Yeah. Yeah. Osceola. Okay. So right now, if if Disney wants to build a roller coaster or an ice cream stand, they don't have to answer to anybody. They build their roller coaster and the ice cream stand. If Universal Studios right across the street wants to rebuild the Hulk, for example, or build a brand new roller coaster, build a new addition to Harry Potter World. Or set up a, a, a taco cart in the middle of whatever. They have to get a permit. They have to apply to the county. They have to get a permit. They have to go through regulatory scrutiny to do all of that. That's what everybody else has to do. Disney doesn't have to do anything like that. Pro? And here's the other thing, too. They have to give their plans out to the local government. Yes. Which is often the time how they find out about the rides way ahead of time is they'll submit these plans to the local zoning board and immediately they're leaked. Like it's like, oh, look, Universal's planning to have this sort of this thing go out, you know, or they're planning to build this or do this. And I would sit and work on that because I've said I represented Universal at one time when I was at a certain firm. Mm -hmm. um, and we would say as soon as we drop these plans, like they're going to go public because of our sunshine laws. And Florida has very strong sunshine laws, which are pretty much freedom of information laws. When we file something uh, with the government, it becomes public. That is a huge advantage Disney has that they can just do stuff and nobody finds out about it. So pretty much Disney opens the ride, which yeah. is, is massive uh, compared mm -hmm. to uh, its competitors. Pro? It needs to be said that if people have been watching this channel for any length of time, they can go back and track exactly what was going to happen. It's, it was going to happen six months ago. It was going to happen three months ago. We're here now. It's still going to happen. And if you've been following these other sources of information out here from the jelly journalists, the goon squads of disinformation, they've been giving you nonsense and, and a whirlwind of garbage where you, you're doing this back and forth trying to figure out, oh, what's going to happen with Disney next? There was never a what's going to happen. It's always going to have been this way. And we have the receipts. Go back and watch the videos. I'm sure that'll be linked in the description. Here's the big thing to take away from this. Iger came back, and it turns out that trashing Camelot means you can't just flip the switch back over again. <laughs> He's got two major problems with the parks. One major problem sits in China. It's probably too spicy to talk about in this video, but they can't get the thing open. And then his other problem is when he goes into the cast member uh, town hall meeting that Christopher Rufo leaked, he gets asked about Reedy Creek District, and he he demurs and says, oh, well, I haven't had a chance to look at the specifics. Yeah, well, guess sure. what? That's also that whirlwind of garbage because he knows, and the fact that he doesn't want to address it means that it's a big enough deal that everybody out there should realize Disney took it on the chin with this one. They mm -hmm. didn't want to lose their Florida self-governance powers that no other company on the planet has, and now it's happened. Yeah, and th and that's just it. And it, it is going to cost them in the long run. And it's is it is it going to be you know uh, financially uh, groundbreaking or earth shattering for Disney? No, not really. I mean, is it going to cost them a lot more money over the next say five or ten years than they otherwise would have done? Yes. I mean, it's going to be more cumbersome. It's going to be more red tape they have to go through. But the key thing is, that I think the part that they really don't like. I think Disney at the end of the day would would be largely fine with. Um, you know, having to deal with permitting issues and things like this, they can get around that. They've got an army of lawyers. I think the thing they're going to hate the most, I think the thing that Disney is going to is going to despise, is the fact that that Reedy Creek board is no longer under their control, and the people that are going to be appointed to it, as I said before, 
are going to be appointed, at least some of them, not all of them, uh, but I think some of them at the very least, a, a good portion of them will be appointed by a Florida state legislature and uh, and the governor himself. Well, they, they could be appointed by the local government as well. That's one of the options for a dependent special district. So if it's a dependent special district of, let's say, Orange County, um, then it might be appointed by the local government. But the problem is that some of the park is in Osceola County. So you're right, it might be appointed at a higher level. Um, and certainly if they're appointed by the governor themselves, they're in some trouble. Uh, some of the folks that are overseeing them are, are going to be are going to be hard asses. They're not going to be easy on them. Now, I think they're going to allow them to do what they're going to do. Right. They're not going to say, hey, we're going to you know, destroy all the all the roads. We're going to tear all this up. Of course, they're not going to do that. that. That's that would be ridiculous. But they certainly will bring some accountability. And for example, when they're trying to exercise their power of imminent domain, which, mm -hmm. by the way, you have essentially given a private company the power of imminent domain to take property from other private proper private business owners, right? So you're you're understanding here how Disney can, with the sanction of the Forge le legislature previously, they can go through the imminent domain process and just take stuff. They mm -hmm. can just say, "Hey, we want that. We're taking that." Yep, um, and, and, and not and even, it. not even, not even with due compensation, as eminent well, do domain usually with, would. <laughs> it, it, the, the, the standard is just compensation, but what yeah. that means is up to a lot of debate, which is why there's a lot of eminent domain lawyers. So, yeah. and and let me tell you something: as we all know, Disney has a hell of a lot of lawyers, which is why they tend to come out on top of most of these fights. Yeah, well, I think they knew they lost this one the moment that Ron DeSantis turned in a 20-point trouncing on his re-election uh, about a month ago. So, Pro, any final thoughts on this before we close it out? It could not happen at a better time for Disney, just as Epic Universe, the new Universal Studios theme park, <laughs> begins to uh, prepare for its opening. So, Bring on Nintendo happy, Land. Uh, that's right. <laughs> well, thank you, gentlemen. I appreciate y'all being here. Make sure you check out uh, Legal Mindset over on his channel, of course, his YouTube. will be linked in the description to this video as you guys see it, probably Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon when this comes out. And uh, WDW Pro, as always, from thatparkplace.com and on Twitter as well, at WDW Pro, the number one. Link will be in the description. You can find Andrew over there and myself on Twitter as well. Gentlemen, thank you for being here tonight, and uh, good to see you, and until next time, folks take care